and welcome to the live stream comedy show brought to you by Merthyr Comedy Festival and Jug Pit Promoting Comedy and of course the big heart of Merthyr Tidville and We Love Merthyr. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. The show has been put on as a thank you to all of those who supported the festival since its start in 2018 and those who have been particularly patient during these last two years with the pandemic. Also it's a bit of a placeholder to remind us that comedy still exists in Merthyr Tidville despite this, the lockdown situation the show this evening is going to work under the format of we've got six fantastic acts for you hand-picked from some of the acts who are joining us at the festival this year and last year and some of the acts we've been very lucky to get hold of because nobody at all is booked doing anything at the moment creatives at home on a saturday night being forced to watch awful things on television like i can see your voice lockdown is starting to ease a little bit with the increased use of vaccination to the success of vaccinations and a timely sort of restart of things like hair salons and barber shops. There are things found in studies said at hair salons and barber shops that people would say to their stylist or barber they wouldn't say to other people, like intimate details about their relationship or their health and well being, and things like short back and sides, please, mate. Uh, just a stern warning for those who are watching at home. At this point in the show, I would normally say, no heckling the acts or heckle the acts at your own risk. But as things are, you can't be hearing or see, heard or seen by our acts this evening. But if you want to say something nice about the acts, please join us in the comments section as you follow along. Any nice comments, any sort of our favorite comments, I'll try and bring it to the show as we go along. There's some sad news yesterday as rock star DMX sadly passed away at the young age of 50 years of age. Uh, if he was here with us tonight, though, I'm quite confident he would love to know where the hood, where the hood where the hood at so please let us know where the hood at tell us who's watching tell us where you are and tell us where your favorite acts are as we go along our first act this evening is sally ann haywood before i bring her in just a reminder to those at home watching uh, this show is being broadcast as after nine o'clock there may be some choice language and some content that might be offensive to little eyes and little ears if they are present no problem at all if you want to have that when children watching with you but just be warned it could be some content of that kind. But no further ado, I bring into our studio here the fantastic Sally Ann Hayward. Ah, oh, hello. So nice to be here. Hello, Mertha, and any everyone, well, wherever you wherever you are in your living rooms, lovely to be here. I'm imagining you're all drinking, drinking at home. That is that is the thing now, isn't it? I quite like drinking at home. You're lying on your sofa drinking, aren't you? And you don't really know how much you've drunk until you get up and you realise that you finished the bucket. I have drunk a lot of alcohol throughout lockdown. You might know that as hand sanitizer. And there were for the first lockdown that when it when we came out of lockdown and it was announced we were going to go back into lockdown again. I thought, I think I might just go straight to the smack. I just thought, I don't think booze is going to get me through this. And I actually said that at a momentary live gig when we were allowed live gigs, sort of autumn time, indoor live gigs. And I said that and this man in this great big fat man in the audience cheered, cheered when I said I was getting onto the smack. And I thought, <laughs> there's no way you're on smack, mate. Look at the size of you. And then I realised that he thought I'd actually said snack. So there we go. And this is like, this is it now, isn't it? This is how we're doing gigs at the moment. Hopefully we're going to be coming out again and being able to do it in real, real life. But at the moment, this is it. And people are having their work parties on Zoom and everything at the moment, aren't they? And people had Christmas parties. I did some comedy at some Christmas parties on Zoom. And the difference is really... With having um, work parties at home is that you've got to get off with your own partner. And actually, the single people, single people out there, if you've had work parties as well on Zoom, you still are going to wake up with the same feelings of dread and regret that you do in a normal work party. And then you're going to open your laptop, see the lick marks and think, oh, God. Who did I get off with? But working from home, oh, actually, that's another thing for the um, young people. The young people, this is a bit of advice, really. Young people out there, if you're struggling to raise the deposit to get on the property um, ladder, use this time, use this time to hug elderly relatives. You know, oh, 
Come on, Nana. It's a special occasion. Let's use tongues. There's your deposit. Um, I'm sure there's couples out there who are watching in. And hello to you couples. Hello there. I'm in a couple. I have a boyfriend, but we don't live together. So we isolated separately, which was quite good, actually, because um, he snores. I'm sure there's some of you out there who do the snoring and some of you that suffer the snoring. Um, it's annoying. It's annoying. I told my mum, my mum said one of the best things I've ever heard about relationships. I said to my mum, I can't stand it. He snores all the time. I can't bear it. It's so annoying. My mum went, oh, won't be long before justice breathing annoys you. So that's nice. But he gets that sleep apnea. You know, when you sort of completely stop breathing for quite some time. Yeah. So I live in hope. We're not married. We're not married. And actually, I'm sure there's married people watching. I can't ask you because I can't see or hear you. But I imagine, you know, um, more often than not, it's a man that proposes to the woman if it's uh, mixed sex marriages. Um, it's nice being proposed to, isn't it? A little boost to the ego, which is why every now and then I go on a date with an illegal immigrant. But me? Oh, I'm so flattered. You want to marry me? Oh, that's so. I did say to my boyfriend that marriage would be all right, but the proposal's got to be good, hasn't it? Moonlight, candles, someone else asking. He did put candles all around the bath once. I thought, how romantic. Turns out he'd had a massive dump. And people are working from home. You're all working from home at the moment. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people are. I don't know how you feel about working from home. Obviously, I'm working from home at the moment. Yeah, some of the problems working from home is one is you've got nick stationery from yourself but the nice thing about working from home is um well it's that passive aggressive behavior that happens in the office because i've been there i've worked in the office and oh my god the passive aggressive behavior i remember i remember right getting reprimanded for using sandra's mug oh god but in my defense there were 40 people in that office and only one toilet cubicle. I did think I'd have to go back to working in an office. Well, I was thinking, you know, at the very beginning, a year ago now, can you believe it? A year ago when the pandemic started and all the work, this work completely went. And I know I didn't know how I was going to manage financially. And I was weighing up my options. What shall I do? And I thought maybe I should get a job in admin and clerical. But to be honest with you, I don't really understand the modern office because, well, Without Tipex, what do you sniff to get through the afternoon? And also, I know things are changing. You guys are in Wales, so you're slight. I'm in England. Um, you're slightly different to us. I think you're a little bit ahead of us. I think you've been, you've done well. You've done well. Well done. Um, I, you know, it's been a year. I get lost on 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 what what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. I'm not entirely sure of the current restrictions, but I do think this is the case. I do think you're allowed sex with members of different households, so long as you take the spring out of the letterbox. I have to say though, um, one thing that's happened out of lockdown is we've sort of united. I'm, I live on a street, we've, I've got to know my neighbors a lot more and I expect you all did this, didn't you? Clapping for the NHS, do you remember on the Thursdays at the beginning, very beginning we were clapping, weren't we? Out the windows, out the doors, clapping for the NHS. Apart from that one Thursday, do you remember that one Thursday when Trump had it, do you remember that? Yeah, and we clapped the virus then, didn't we? That's what we did. But I did, at the beginning of lockdown, like last summer when it's beautiful, I really got to know my neighbours, and I particularly got to know um, the girl who lives next door. She's three, right? And in the summer, we'd be in the back gardens, she'd sit on the wall, we'd chat for hours, we'd talk about life, the world. Trouble is, always my cigarettes. What else have I been doing? Oh, I say getting fit. I don't know if getting fit is actually the right word, right phrase. I've been trying to, um, you know, move, really. I uh, did couch to 5K. Yeah, I'm sure some of you did that. Um, I haven't quite got off the couch, but I've got all the gear. I've got all the gear. I've got the, um, the Adidas cushions. I've got the Nike slippers. I've got the chili bottle full of Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Actually, I have started running a little bit. That's nice. And um, I live um, in Bristol. I don't know how familiar you are with this part. We're not far from you at all in Bristol. But I've started running in Western Supermare. I don't know how familiar you are with Western Supermare. But 
that's where I've been going a little bit. And um, the sea there, it's got, I don't know the exact terminology, but it's quite, it's got like the tide goes right out on the Seven Estuary there, right out. And when you go to Western Supermare, you realise why that sea doesn't want to come back again. Other things to keep fit during lockdown that I've been doing yoga. I've do, been doing a lot of yoga. Um, that really helps with the mental health. I absolutely encourage you to do it. Also helps with flexibility. So much so that I have got so flexible that I can bend right down and pick up my Prozac. And football. Football, I'm going to get back to playing football again. Us girls are doing it, aren't we? We're good at the old football now. Oh, yes. And women, my, single women my age, really good in the goal. Yep. Oh, yes. In fact, all you got to do is paint a little bo bouquet of flowers on that ball and we'll fucking catch it. Massive argument at practice because everyone's turned up in the same outfit. You're never an eight. It's a fucking number, not a size. Oh, and swimming. The pools, the pools, they're open. The outdoor ones are open. The indoors are going to be opening soon. I love swimming. I don't know if you've got this. In the pool where I go, they've got that dye that turns the water brown when someone's done a poo in it. I am. Um, a couple else can I tell you? A couple more things. I'll tell you a couple more things. Yes, that's what I'll tell you. Um, I went for a little walk the other day. Um, and you have to sort of come, you have to, because public toilets are still closed. They are here anyway, and you have to come home quite early. It's a bit annoying, really. So what I've done, what I've done, it's, it's all right for men, isn't it? Women, it's harder. That's well, what I've done, right, is I've invested in a shiwi. Now, if you don't know what a shiwi is, I shall explain it. It's basically a little funnel that you can, women can attach to their vagina, and we can wee standing up. It's like a little willy like that. And mine arrived. Mine arrived. I got it from Amazon. And my first thought one was when it arrived was, um, oh, we should have got a bigger one. Hmm. But it's amazing. It's, oh, my goodness. It's like having a willy. Honestly, it's incredible. It's a real insight into what it's like being a bloke. really is. I got a pay rise as well. It's terrible, isn't it, that women are still paid less than men for doing the same job. Isn't it awful? And women's days start earlier, don't they? Yeah, she's got to factor in all that extra time for parking. I'd love to talk about feminism more, but I'm worried I'm just a bit too pretty. Now, people, I've done my um, 10 minutes. I'd love to say you've been lovely. I've no idea. I've no idea how you've been. You might have been sat scratching your asses for all I know. But thank you for thank you for supporting this. Um, and one little, just one little thing to end with. Um, uh, one of the symptoms of COVID-19 is actually reduced lung capacity. So if you haven't found this funny, it's probably quite a good thing. Because in this instance, laughter is actually the worst medicine. Thank you very much. Hopefully see you in the real world soon. The fantastic Sally Ann Haywood. Always a gig, to, always a pleasure to gig with Sally Ann. And it's a pleasure for me seeing these guys on the screen this evening because I haven't seen some of them for the last 12 months. All of the country not able to meet up. Uh, if you did enjoy Sally Ann or any of our acts this evening, please get in touch via the comments section and our favourite comments we'll try and show on the screen. Uh, Karen B, sit in watching channels for you really enjoy Sally Ann Haywood. That's very nice. That's nice to see. Uh, our next act this evening is uh, John Pearson. I haven't seen John since before lockdown. I always love gigging with John. I'm sure you'll enjoy it just as much sat at home. Uh, please welcome to your screens the fantastic Mr. John Pearson. Whee! Hello, Mirtha. Welcome along. Uh, I tried to put a little bit of um, showbiz into that by, well, basically I started vaping during lockdown just so that I can do a smoke machine uh, during gigs like this where there's nobody here, uh, nobody to actually cheer me on, although I've got the whole family watching me on the left-hand side with headphones on watching television uh, because they're all absolutely addicted to Netflix. And I'm now sat in the corner of my living room uh, pretending like this is exactly what showbiz is about. So hello, Mirtha. Welcome along to the Comedy Festival. I am John Pearson, uh, uh, master of absolutely zero um, to do with virtual comedy, um, mainly just because it's it's this, isn't it? It's this. We've got. I'm hoping there might be some comments coming in. Let's be honest. Oh, there's some. Yeah. Oh, oh, there. Yeah. You see, Peter Purse has already said you were great. Thank you. And he's even shouted thank you. That's what he's done. He's shouted thank you. <laughs> so thank you very much, Peter. I think that was at Sally. Probably not at me. Um. So yes, comedian. Uh, comedian that uh, has been out of work since the um since the start of the pandemic. Um. 
which was in March, by the way, March 2020, if anyone wants to remember what the year, because we're now in March 2020A. That's what we're in. We're in A, because no one's counting it. We're not going to count a whole year. We're going to call it A, um, and then there's going to be an extra year added on to the end of everybody's lives um, when they can track you with the uh, with the vaccine. That's what they're going to do. So I'm a, I, I stopped working in March, and then I uh, had a, a basically a nervous breakdown, um, wondering how I was going to pay my rent. And then decided to go and retrain. So I retrained as uh, as as we were told to by the fantastic government that we've got uh, over here in England, because uh, obviously you guys you've got a much better government that does do what you 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 could go off and do what you want. Whereas ours are like, nah, got to stay inside, guys. Um, great to have the festival next year in Merthyr itself. It will be Ray, you aka the Bearded Dragon. Uh, oh, hello, Ray, the Bearded Dragon. Um, he wants to see the see the comedy festival in the flesh rather than via. Well, but let's be honest, it's only fans without the um without the the good stuff, isn't it? And possibly without the payment. That's what it is. So I, I went off and retrained. Uh, I retrained and I had to um go for an interview, a very prestigious job uh, in a Tesco's warehouse. Now, if anyone's ever worked for I mean I'm using the name now mainly because I'm hoping that gigs are coming back in the next couple of months, so I won't have to work for them for much longer. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. But working with Tesco's, I am a pick and packer. That's what I do. Uh, I pick and pack at Tesco's. Um, if anyone gets online shopping, uh, I'm assuming most of you do, because that's the way that everyone has made money this year so far, is by having stuff online. For instance, Just Eat is now, uh, I think it's uh, probably above um, Goldman and Sachs. I think it's much above those. It's, it, it doesn't need a vaccination. Uh, it's now making more money than anyone else because, let's be honest, who hasn't used Just Eat or, or a similar service during this? I know I have. I install it now uh, just for breakfast. And I was a comedian before this. We don't get up until 12 o'clock anyway. So it's exactly the same for me. My wife is annoyed with me for doing it because it does mean that I'm just like, oh, I really fancy a McDonald's. And she'll be like, oh, no, we can't have a McDonald's. Um, <laughs> can't have a McDonald's today, John. And it was like, ding dong, uh, and the McDonald's will be at the door. That's literally how my life worked now. So yeah, I'm working at Tesco's. Um, Tesco's is... Uh, <laughs> it's interesting doing picking and packing, especially for online shopping. Because if you online shop, uh, which I'm assuming some of you do, all 23 of you that are watching, I'm assuming that you do online shop as well. Uh, and if you do... I will let you into a secret. We definitely judge you. We definitely, definitely judge you <laughs> on what you're putting in your basket. I had, uh, we, we, and we give you names. We give you names as well. We give everyone a name. Um, for instance, we had the uh, the, the guy that uh, just had protein powder and Red Bull. Uh, so he was called uh, it was Speedy Gonzalez, obviously, because he's obviously into that, or Muscles McMuscles. That's the other name we gave him. We also had a woman uh, who only ordered Tenor Lady and four bottles of red wine. Now that, she was called Party Girl, uh, and that was a monthly order. So that's what she does every month. During lockdown, just orders 10 ladies and four bottles of red wine. What a party that would be. Uh, so yeah, I retrained with Tesco's uh, because I was a uh, originally a, just a normal comedian. Uh, who would travel around the country uh, doing so. Look at Ian Bowden, John being edgy with the vape jokes. Is that edgy, Ian? I don't know if that is edgy. I don't think vaping jokes is edgy. Um, I think vaping jokes uh, are probably just all smoke and mirrors. Leaving pause for laughter. That's what I'm doing right there. That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I love the fact that it's then brought up on screen as well. By the way, every now and again, it gets brought up on screen so everyone else can see it. But if you're in the YouTube, you've already seen it and laughed about 15 minutes ago. Uh, that's probably what you're doing. It's weird, this, because we are working on a, a on a delay. I don't know if anyone's ever worked on a what it can only be described as a satellite delay for jokes when there's nobody else in the room and you're waiting for comments to come through on YouTube, even though you're 25 seconds behind on something else that's streaming it. So then you're watching yourself, like I am now, in a sort of like quite a weird... I mean, it's going to be the hardest wank I've ever had that last 20 seconds when I've gone off, but I'm still on screen. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. That's edgy, Ian. That's what you came here for. Um, so, yeah, it's been an interesting year getting into this and doing this and becoming a basically an IT technician, haven't we? We've all become IT technicians uh, over this time. I mean, who hasn't used Zoom yet? Who hasn't used Zoom? My wife, is. Um, she works from home. She's got a proper job, as my dad calls it. Um, she's got a proper job, so she earns proper money. Uh, and she's been working from home, doing a lot of stuff via Zoom. And uh, if no one's uh, married to a comedian, 
uh, which I assume some of you probably aren't. Uh, we are the worst people to be in the room when someone else is on a Zoom call. Uh, what I will do, I will uh, appear in the back of the Zoom call. Now, my wife is uh, quite a um. Well, I wouldn't like to say that she's uh, she likes she cares about her appearance. So uh, you know, on Zoom calls, let's be honest, we all do it. We're all. I mean, I'm just wearing pajama bottoms below what I've got on here. Put a t-shirt on, pajama bottoms. That's what I've got. I'm wearing nothing, actually. I'm absolutely naked from the waist down. But she likes to look nice. When she doesn't look nice, she doesn't put a video on. Or if she has it on, it'll be to the slightly to the side so she can't see it and she won't look at the screen because she doesn't like to see herself. So what I like to do uh, during her Zoom meetings is I will walk through the back of the Zoom meeting. Um, <laughs> and I will walk through the back of the Zoom meeting in different uh, different attire. My favorite one so far, I tried the horse's head. Tried that. That didn't work so well. But now the one that works the best is the burglar outfit, which I uh, concocted myself. It's just a mask. Uh, and with, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a face mask with eyes cut out of it over my face uh, and a black and white T-shirt brown bag with swag written on it and walk through the back of her zoom meeting uh whilst carrying a tv and that will freak everybody out on every single zoom meeting that you can ever be on uh karen b the chewbacca looks like it's had a few too many during lockdown yeah he has uh, old chewbacca there is looking a little bit uh, a little bit worse for her isn't he i am in my own house by the way i'm not in a child's bedroom just like to point that out because i have also got that weird it's that way. And you can never tell, can you? You can never tell. It's got a, I've got that weird concave mirror. Looks like I'm in a um look like I'm in a, in a in a hall of mirrors in some sort of weird, weird circus. See lot like, I'm watching myself get it wrong. That's what I'm doing. Um so yeah, so it's been a, it's been strange. It's been a weird time for everybody, I think, doing this uh do, doing these lockdown. And I hope everyone else is doing okay in lockdown. I've not seen my my parents for over a year. Uh, they live in a little town called Melton Mowbray, which is, um, you might know it, it's where the pies come from. Um, and I've not seen them for over a year. I ring them every week and I have the same question with them every week, uh, which the question is, so what have you been up to? Um, not a lot. Let's be honest. Not a lot. They're, uh, they're, 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 they're in their seventies and, uh, they don't do much other than, uh, they've become farm shop shoppers, which I never thought was going to happen. They originally, before that they shopped at Lidl, uh, and now they're shopping at farm shops, but, they're on a drive to lose weight, and they've stopped eating chocolate, which is what they've done. Uh, that's one thing that my mum's very proud of. We've not eaten any chocolate since March, John. However, we are hammering a flapjack a week. And when they say a flapjack a week, we're talking a whole tray bake from a farm shop. So I don't quite... And the mum says, why am I not losing any weight? Well, I can tell you why, mum. You're eating a whole flapjack. That's what you're doing. I could do one of those in myself um, because I'm a big guy. I'm six foot six and I weigh 21 stone. Come on, get over it. I could hammer a flapjack in about three minutes. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's it, I don't know how everyone else is getting on. I hope everyone else is doing okay. I hope the Merth, I do hope that the Merthyr Comedy Festival does go ahead next year uh, because I was supposed to be there. I was supposed to be coming down and doing my show, which is called "What Have You Been Up To?" Um, because that's what it is. Uh, I mainly do crowd work, uh, which makes these gigs quite difficult, uh, as you could probably tell by the fact that I'm only doing ten minutes and I'm now starting to pad. Some people might say you've been padding all the way through, John. Yeah, I have. I have been padding quite the way, quite the way through it, all the way through to the ten minutes until my time is up. But you guys, I hope everyone having a great time. I hope Merthyr does continue. I hope the Comedy Festival does go ahead next year. All twenty six of you: Ian Bowden, Ray Turner, the Bearded Dragon, Matt Reese, Peter Purse, everybody, Kev Sutherland. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm going to hand you back to Drew. You have been great. I will see you all again next year in the flesh. You'll see exactly how big I am. Thank you very much. See you later. Goodbye. Fantastic. John Pierce and anyone who there was a little bit more eagle-eyed will have a clue of how big John is. It was Giacomo, uh, post, uh, Giacomo t a Pillow, I believe, on his left there. As Sally Ann pointed out, and so did John as comics, we are working from home. I actually work from my spare room at the moment now. Uh, what I've done cleverly is uh, turn my desk around to face the white wall so you can't see my wardrobes and my washing in the background. Uh, part of the reason I did that was, one, to look more professional, but two, I've got it on good authority that Garod from Triogi is watching and he's got a history of stealing my underwear off my washing line. And I thought him being able to see my dirty washing and dirty laundry might start that off again. And we don't want to go down that route, do we, Garod? Uh, Garod actually asked for a shout out in the show. Hope that was a shout out you wanted, Garod. Uh, if it's not, uh, touch it. Uh, our next act this evening is a fantastic Karen Bailey. And I'm about to bring her in shortly. So if this is a live show now, I'd say clap your hands, cheer. But why not clap your hands and cheer in your own living room? And please welcome to the screen, fantastic Karen Bailey. I'm clapping myself, sod it. I don't care. Hi, guys. I uh, hope you're all well. Hey, hi, Mercer. Um, 
I, well, well, how are you? You're probably looking at my sort of strange surroundings. Um, I live on a boat. I live on a boat in the middle of Birmingham. Um, the weirdest things people say to me living on a boat, what's it like during the floods? It goes up. I'll get a slightly better view. Um, I did actually move. When people say to me, like, moving is the most stressful thing you can do. Oh, my God, it's so stressful. It's so stressful. It's so stressful. Well, I actually moved during lockdown. And it's not stressful. I just drove around the corner. It took me 20 minutes. So stop being so bloody dramatic. Um, I spent lockdown on my own. Yeah, I've been on my own for a, for a long time. I've got my dog. It's not quite the same, though, is it? He might stop barking in a minute because he just likes the attention when I'm talking to people. See, can you hear him growling already? Um, yeah, so when I tell people I've been on my own, they're like, oh, oh, oh yeah, I want cock, not pity. Um Mind you, somebody out there's probably got a pit pitiful cop. That'll do. As long as it's two metres. Got to be safe. Got to be safe, guys. Um, are we having a drink tonight? sally Ann was talking about drinking. I'm on the gin, guys. I'm on the gin. One thing, right, I don't miss about live gigs. I really miss it, but the one thing I don't miss, it pissed women. We're a nightmare, aren't we, girls? Pissed women. Oh, my God. I did a gig once with this woman at the moment. was so pissed. I said, all right, love, what do you do? She went, I work for spec savers. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, well, if somebody chats you up, I'd book them an appointment. She was livid, right? She came up to me in the interval. She went, oh, I hope you realise we do a lot for charity. I said, like, what? She says, when people bring in their old glasses, we send them to Africa. I thought food and water was their primary concern. You can just see them there, can't you? Every day, Nikita walks 20 miles for water. With spec savers help, she can admire the view. So what else have I been doing? Um, Bertha, will you shut up? This is what I, I will actually get my dog and show you in a minute. He's a beautiful King Charles Cavalier. Not been able to take him to the groomers during lockdown, which has been a shame. Um, I'll tell you a true story, actually. First time I ever took him to the groomers, um, the groomer said, has he ever been to the groomers before? And I said, no. He said, well, you do realise he's going to be really scared of the electric clippers. So what you need to do... You need to get an electric toothbrush. You need to brush his ears and give him tidbits. So yeah, I can do that. So I got back to the boat and realized I didn't have an electric toothbrush. So I had to use something else. Oh, yeah. So if you've already guessed, I can guess. Yeah, absolutely. You try explaining bite marks on your vibrator. Oh, he doesn't like that joke. I do apologize. Um, I have to say, my, he did look lovely. He couldn't walk for a few days, but he did look lovely. Um, so I hope, guys, out there, that you're coping during lockdown. If there's any couples, if I keep leaning forward, it's me throwing a bone to my dog. Not, it looks like I'm playing with myself. I'm not, honestly. Um, uh, yeah, that's the trouble with Zoom because he thinks I'm talking to somebody else and he's getting jealous. Um, so yeah, during lockdown, couples out there, are you still having sex? Is sex still a thing? Are we still doing it? Because if you do, right, I like to ask audiences, right, if you have sex with the lights on or off. Now, when I ask that question, right, people who like sex with the lights on are normally men and skinny women, yeah? The rest of us, we've got blackout curtains, pyjamas up to here. I've got a onesie with a flap. Yeah, that's a bloody good idea, isn't it? I'm going on Dragon's Den with that. I want to see Deborah Meaden trying to get the Velcro out of a minge. Um, but uh, I have to be honest, I am... I'm a bit conscious of my weight. Anybody has put weight on? I'm just going to grab my dog because he's doing half a good head in. Come here. Come here. Come on. Up. This is Bert, by the way. This is the one who's barking. There he is. Um, just be quiet for a minute. Mommy's trying to earn us some money so you can have some more bones, you little shit. Um, do apologise. <laughs> this is just bizarre, isn't it, guys? Um, so what was I talking about? Oh, yes. Uh, corona Curves. Corona curse. Sorry, thanks, Rob. I'm glad you appreciate that, you know, what well, I am doing it live. I could have booted the dog out, but it'd probably fall in the canal. Um, so I <laughs> cheers. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, uh, corona curves. Is that a thing? I heard the other day corona stone. Fucking corona stone. I have put weight on. I'm really pissed off with myself. Ages ago, right, a friend of mine, another comedian, said to me once, You've actually got a nice face. I was like, oh, he said, if you lose two stone, I'll shag you. I was like, oh, what about half a stone for a finger? Um, I did actually lose the two stone. Uh, but you know what, but you know, when you lose weight, people always go, oh, I can tell you've lost weight. You can see it in your face. 
I lost two stone. How big was my face? People, you know, here comes moon face. So yeah, I know that I've got to go, I've got to go back to, um, oh, I don't know, losing weight, whatever, Weight Watchers, that shite place is. So I'll go back to Weight Watchers. I, I, I normally ask these people, right? What's the first thing you do before you weigh in? Now I did a gig once and I said to this woman, what's the first thing you do before you weigh in? And she said, shave. I was like, shave? How hairy are you? Slimmer of the week is Chewbacca. And talking about hair, can I talk to the women out there? Um, during lockdown, have you gone a bit, have you gone a bit feral? You know, a bit Bear grills. You know what I'm talking about? Because I have to say, the other day, I mean, and I know it's a bit gross, but I looked down the other day, I thought, bloody hell, a squirrel's moved into me knickers. <coughs> and it wasn't the glamorous red one. Oh, no, it was the old grey. I've got more in common with the red squirrel. It's hardly seen and rarely breeds. I'm just going to a little sip of my drink. <coughs> You're probably looking at me thinking, that's probably about her third gin. And you'd be right, it is probably about my third gin. So <coughs> I hope you're all coping during... I've had to do... <coughs> excuse me. I've had to do some teaching during lockdown. That was my job before I did comedy. So I've had to go back into... Talking about being feral, I've had feral kids. <coughs> I went to school one day, this 10-year-old child said, you can't hit me, because if you do, you'll lose your effing job. So I walked up and bent down and I whispered in his ear, you might be the one. I lose my job over. Yeah, not a word all day, little shit. <coughs> I was doing, teaching this class once. We were talking about the Tudors and Henry VIII. This little kid said, Miss, why did, why was Anne Boleyn beheaded? I said, well, she had a few too many boyfriends. This other kid went, Miss, was she a slag? Went, yeah. And then another child went, Miss, does that mean my, my mum's going to get her head chopped off? Um, and I think that's why I've been single for so long. They say 80% of people meet people through work <coughs> sorry i do apologize <coughs> it's not covid i have my jab <coughs> oh dear me a dog and now a cough um uh yeah i think that's why i've been single for so long and say 80 percent of people meet people through work what's the primary school teacher who the hell was i gonna meet mind you i did try speed dating well it was parents evening um I'm going to leave you with a couple of things. You've been really lovely, uh, I, I think. I hope you're probably thinking, who's that mad woman that's di diving all over the place, drinking gin, grabbing the dog and coughing? Um, <coughs> oh, dear me. Um, yeah, I'll leave you with a couple of things. Um, I want to leave you with my nan's motto about men, God rest her soul. She used to say, find them, feel them, fuck them, and forget them. Oh, yeah. She wasn't a slang, she had dementia. And the other thing people say to me, Karen, why are you single? You must meet loads of people doing comedy. I want to let you into a little comedy secret before I go. Male comedians are funny magnets. I'm more of a fridge magnet. Yeah. I'm attracted to white bulky things. And I have been dumped outside a council house. There's a rude bit to this now. So if you've got any young ears, please cover them. Like a fridge. Where my legs open, a light comes on. And... There's something indistinguishable at the back that's starting to smell. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mind you, I did that a gig once. But I went, yeah, well, still eat it if you bisque. Um, right, okay. Well, that's made you drop your wine, hasn't it? Um, you've been lovely. I hope you've been lovely. I have no idea. Um, if you're young and handsome, get in touch. <coughs> I'm going to cough away and um, enjoy the rest of the night. Bye, Martha. Thank you very much to the fantastic Karen Bailey. Uh, both Karen and John are represented by a rush of laughter comedy agency. If you want to get in touch with them on their website and look at all the other wonderful acts as well, please feel free to do so. If you're enjoying the show, get in touch with us in the comments section. It's always nice to hear your positive comments. Absolutely brilliant, Karen B. So from one, one Karen B to another, that's nice. Now, our next act this evening is Andrew White. I haven't had a chance to say hello to Andrew in the green room yet this evening, so I'm going to say hello very quickly as I bring him in. Please welcome to the stage, Andrew White. Andrew, hello, how are you? Hi, Drew. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yes, well, I leave you do your thing. All the best and see you in 10 minutes. Thanks. Yeah, let's have a catch up later. I'm, I'm just at work at the moment. Uh, hello, everybody. Lovely to be here. Uh, it's it's uh, it's weird, actually. I did the first ever Merthyr Comedy Festival. Um, uh, I think it was the first ever one. And it was uh, I was competing with the Grand National. So uh, I, 
I've, I've learned that was my first ever learned lesson of of making sure you check major sporting events before you before you book a comedy gig. But it was absolutely lovely, and the uh, the stalwarts that weren't interested in, in interested in horse, horse racing were very nice to me. Uh, I can see the YouTube comments if anyone wants to uh, type a heckle or um, just tell me about your day. I'd, I'd love to I'd love to hear about it. Um, I've been thinking about Easter mainly. That's kind of been uh, what I've been thinking about recently because I think Easter is shit. And I think and I'm I'm just want to get this out there because uh, in about two weeks' time this is be going to become super irrelevant, and I'm never going to get to use it again in a gig. So I want to get it out to you, the good people of Merthyr Comedy Festival, that Easter is and it's nothing against religion or Easter celebrants. It's just it is just objectively bad. I mean, first of all, it's a very scatty scatty. Uh, holiday. I mean, it can happen depending on, on what kind of version of Christianity you follow on three separate months. That's a quarter of the calendar. That's, I mean, that's greedy. At least Christmas, Christmas always happens on, on one day and you know when that day is. And you know what? It changes day of the week. Easter always lose a weekend. Christmas, at least it may occasionally relieve us of a godforsaken Tuesday. But no, Easter always ruins your weekend. You've got to, you know, you've got to do stuff with that. And it, and it, yeah, I just, I don't think it's, it's, it's worth. Uh, worth the hype that we give it because we give it so much more. I mean, Christmas, you get Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and sometimes Christmas Eve. A lot of places don't even care about Christmas Eve anymore. They're still open and fully operational. So you get two days on Christmas. Easter, fucking Trove Tuesday, Good Friday, uh, uh, Maundy. Th if you ever had a call, like someone's like, oh, uh, sorry, we've got reduced operating hours because of Maundy Thursday. Fuck off. That's I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, genuinely, it feels like a season that was invented by dictionary writers trying to hit a minimum word count. That like Maundy Thursday, Shrove Tuesday, Lent. Is that, oh, God, we're Dave, we're a bit light on the Bs. Uh, Blagnicious. Oh, what, what's that? What's that? Uh, Blagnicious, as in Blagnicious Wednesday, the first full moon Wednesday after Shrove Tuesday. Oh, right. Cool. Cheers, Dave. Yeah, yes. It celebrates the day when Mary Magdalene got a manicure in, in the resurrection story. Oh, fantastic. Well, well, filling up the numbers quickly. Um, it's the, it's the chocolate holiday, says Beverly. If you don't like chocolate, there's nothing to offer. Well, I do love chocolate. Uh, I, I do. I would argue, though, that it is available uh, year round. That is my uh, my counter to you, Beverly. Matt Reeves, my last gig in the real world with, with Andrew. It was lovely to see you, uh, Matt, in the comments. Thank you so much for uh, for, for tuning in. Uh, it was a last ever gig, and we were all. It was in Dorset, which um, now I don't know. I don't know if you know much about Dorset. Um, so I like. I'll give you the. I'll give you a sense of Dorset. Uh, when you drive around and see the county signs, like Wiltshire welcomes you. Welcome to Hampshire. Heading towards Bournemouth, it's just Dorset. Like her lump here, that's us. Sums up pretty much very well. Uh, and literally, uh, I mean, think me, Matt, and uh, Tom Glover and Ro Rob Hughes were all on. And we were kind of all being like, oh, you know what? We might lose our livelihoods. And all the Dorset locals were just like fucking shaking hands and hugging us and being like, oh, I don't believe in that bollocks. So, uh, I, and I think that, that attitude in Dorset has very much prevailed, um, which is, uh, considering the average age of Dorset, um, I don't know if you know, you know, like when a cat goes to find a nice warm place, like behind a washing machine to die. That's kind of Dorset, uh, generally for for the UK. Um, average age, uh, dead by now. It's um, it's got it's quite late in the evening. Um, the bearded dragon. I'm with Andrew. Easter is yes. Thank you, Ray. Uh, thank, I, I mean, like Christmas. Um, Christmas. Uh, now Lent, first of all, is the anti-Advent. Like Advent, you get something every day. Nice bit of chocolate. Ca Counter Beverly. You know, you get chocolate in Christmas as well. Um, or, you know, if you're in one of those families, you get to see a picture, you know, that, you know, those families, you ever go around to someone's house and they're like, oh, um, would you like a drink? Uh, yeah, cool. What do you have? Um, water. Uh huh. Oh, we don't do fizz in this household. And you're like, oh, right. On Advent, they open up a little picture. Those, one of those households. They're, all those, the families as well, they're like, oh, we don't, we don't do fizz in this household. They've got a full wine rack as well. Like, okay, Karen. Okay. Um, apologies as well. I realize I've, I've just, I've, I've, I've uh, I've just pick, picked a name out of thin air there, but we've had Karen on tonight, and we have Karen on in the comments. Um, I didn't I didn't mean to. Uh, uh, to I was, that was just a, a name that came to my head, um, and, because it's in my head clearly. Uh, yeah, so you know, Christmas, Christmas, you get chocolate, you get chocolate every single day. It's it it moves. It can relieve us of a weekday. Easter, not worth it. Not worth it at all. And especially in lockdown, it 
it built itself up so much. I don't know if anyone else had this. Everything it built itself so much up as like a as like a nice relief. Oh, a nice relief, Easter relief. And it just it just doesn't like. There's no relief. There is no. There's been no blessed relief. Christmas felt like a little bit of a relief. Easter, no. It's just the exact same. Just listening to your parents drone on about the scheduling times of bargain hunt and oh, oh my goodness, I just. I love my parents, but have you ever tuned out of a conversation you've just started? That has been my entire lockdown, just like starting a conversation and then going, I've made a fatal casting error. I do not want to have this discussion with either of you. Like, my mum, my mum's favourite activity is uh, reporting on on deaths of people I've never heard of. Uh, I mean, obviously, she, she's um, uh, been a bit more uh, on, on the money recently, but normally it's like, oh, you know, um, Peter, Peter Pom Pom Pom, Peter Pom Pom's died. Who was that? Oh, he was a, a boom operator in one episode of Holby City. I'm like, okay, fantastic. Um, to be fair, she she refreshes the the Mail Online like at I, like I'm impressed almost. Well, whatever you say about the Daily Mail, it's impressive how regularly they update their website for how often my mother checks it. The fact that they always have new news for her, even if it is the death of Peter Bomb Bomb, uh, boom operator for one episode of Holby City. My dad, on the other hand, um, he is. Well, do you know how toddlers like really talk about like cartoon films they like? Like, oh, oh, and then the f the funny lion fell on his bottom. <laughs> Let's give you like a play by play, every single detail. Um, well, I have a theory that uh, a lot of men don't grow up beyond that. Uh, they just change from cartoons to Jason Statham films. Uh, that's kind of been my my lockdown. Is my dad poorly explaining the plot of Jason Statham films? I chose not to watch in the first place. Like, Dan, we're in the same household. We have the same Netflix account. I could have watched this with you. I didn't want to. I didn't want to watch it with expert storytelling, a million pounds worth of budget. Your poor v verbal retelling, as if it's some sort of ancient uh, oral history passed down through generations, is not good. Please do not tell me. Uh, it's, I've just... I feel like I've been with my parents and I've been seeing their Netflix choices and it's just a terrifying glimpse into straight culture. Um, I am gay, by the way, a Kel surprise. Uh, so probably a YouTube stream full of people not being that surprised. It, it, it's, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I've, I've kind of, I feel like this lockdown has simultaneously uh, taken me away from any sort of sense of LGBT community and also driven me further and further into it just to avoid my, my parents' uh, boredom. Uh, it, it and uh, by the way, I'm, I said about Dorset earlier. That is kind of where I live, Dorset, Wiltshire. Uh, and if you if you're wondering what it's like being gay in in Dorset, Wiltshire, it, it it's pretty much just me. Uh, I walk down the street and people are like, ah, the Pride Parade. That's rolled around quickly this year. I'm, I'm finding out more and more that my type is uh, attainable. As soon as I find out someone's gay, they instantly become more attractive because possibility is fucking sexy. That's that, that's what it's like when you're living in, in rural England. It's like, oh, another gay man. That is hot as hell. Like, I'm, I'm yeah, I mean, gay man my age. Obviously, if I went on to Grinder, uh, I could have a full gay saga holiday falling at my feet. Um, I indeed have. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just sorry. I just I don't want to put this image in your head, but it, you do get a lot of people. You, you can't work out whether they want to remain anonymous or can't upload a profile picture, and it's just like. You just feel you feel for them because it's not like Facebook. You can't get your grandchildren to help with Grinder, can you? You can't be like, "Oh, little Timmy, can you help me uh, help me send a dick pic to this nice young man?" <laughs> it's it's not the same. So I have been uh, just kind of s s single, bored. And God, this sounds like a fucking uh, advert now, like a spam advert, like horny singles in your area. Um, <laughs> so uh, if there is any uh, gay people out there, um, that da, 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 no, sorry, uh, thank you, Karen. I've never met a sober Karen, including myself. Um, so uh, I, I shouldn't have, you know what? I shouldn't have, uh, I shouldn't have acknowledged it. I feel like we were on good momentum to end on time. And then I went into Karen's much appreciated comment um, and I didn't have anything to say funny about it. So I'm just, I'm just going to leave now. Uh, thank you so much. You've been absolutely uh, online. You've been watching. You, thank you. Bye-bye.
Thank you very much, Andrew White. And as if you were paying attention at the start of Andrew's set, you would have heard him say that he did perform at the very first Smith Comedy Festival back in 2018. And he had the short straw of performing in the Crown's Beer Garden in the afternoon. His, his, his set started very, very well. By the end, he had to compete with a number of ladies who had far too much wine in the sun. I think he wrapped up his show by singing Delilah just to try and get out of there as quick as he can. You might have noticed Andrew's quite young too. I think his dad brought him to the festival because he was still under, under 18 or maybe even 17 at the time and his dad drove him up. So, Andrew, I'll catch back with you in the green room later. Uh, we've got a very, very, uh, a very special act up next. Now, this act headlines up and down the country, so we're really grateful to have them on the show. And uh, they've been doing a lot of online gigs lately. I'm sure you love them as much as I do. Please welcome to the stage uh, for our penultimate act of this evening, the fantastic Falsetto Sock Puppet Theatre. Hello, we are the Scottish Falsetto Sock Puppet Theatre, and so am I, and so is he. Shit, he's got a guitar. I have, and you appear to be naked. I'll, I'll just see what I can do about that. I don't know what he's going to do about that. I'll find something, because tonight, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, we are going to entertain you with every genre of entertainment. Every genre, yes, every genre of entertainment, ladies and gentlemen of Murtha. We can do a theatre. Do you like a bit of theatre? They're not particularly audible in their response. They're not audible in their response tonight. I think I have cottoned on to that fact. Yes, it, it is, by the way, it is uh, 13 minutes to 10 o'clock at night. We are genuinely live. You you can see us and hear us, so that's the truth. Actually, we could do a bit of theatre. We could do a bit of film. Do you like a bit of film? Do you think they understand the word film? Of course they understand the word film. Film is the Scottish word for... For film, there's not another word, another word for it. We could do uh, romantic films, we could do action films, we could do horror films. I love a horror film, do you? Oh, yeah. I would go anywhere to see a Hitchcock. Psycho? No, usually walk. That, you could make that the low benchmark for your standard of comedy tonight. Because tonight, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're going to try everything. Are we going to try a Nordic crime drama? Nordic crime. Yeah, because I've been working on a Nordic crime drama and we could do it. When you say Nordic crime drama, you mean, I mean, yes. By Nordic crime drama, yes. I mean, yes. A crime drama, yes. About a man without a penis. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's about the level. What about circus? What? Why the hell would we do circus? Do they look like a circus audience? They don't look like a circus. They don't look like an audience. I know, but they're not. They didn't tune in to watch circus. Oh, come on. They must. I've just seen the strong man outside. The strong man. Yes, the strong man's outside. He's busy using steroids to build up his arms and legs. Anabolic? No, just his arms and legs. Well, we're not. We're not going to be doing circus. We're not going to be doing horror films. Oh, come on. I love horror films. I, I could do The Exorcist. Would you like to see my solo rendition of The Exorcist? The they can't answer you. They literally can't answer. They could text. They could send a little text along the bottom of the screen, yes, but they're not going to do that. Who wants to see my solo rendition of The Exorcist? There you go. Somebody did. Did they? Yes, they did. Yes. So um, get rid of the guitar. I think you need to get rid of the guitar for this. But Okay. So my solo rendition. My solo rendition. That's what I'm telling you. I'm just queuing you up. Okay. My solo rendition of The Exorcist. Okay, I can't do the exorcist. Never mind doing the exorcist. What we're going to do, what we're going to do for you tonight is we are going to do one of the finest genres of variety entertainment, a little bit of magic. Magic, yes, I should just get my magic outfit on. Oh, he's got a magic outfit, has he? I, I had a magic outfit. I've just uh, lost, lost it. Uh, no, it's down there on the left. I've just found it now. Okay, so isn't there a problem, a problem with magic? Well, what's the problem with magic? Isn't magic shit? No, 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 no. Think of the greats of magic. Who Dini? Who's Dini? No, no. Talking about the greats of magic. Who Dini? That's what I asked you. Who's Dini? Are you going to do that again? What? Pretending not to understand words that I say. I have no idea what you mean. That is not big and it's not clever. That is superficial. Thank you very much. We when he died, ladies and gentlemen, when he died, Houdini, who, shut it, Houdini wanted us to contact him from beyond the grave. How? Seance, once. You don't even know you're doing it, do you? He wanted us to contact him by tapping the table. And he wanted us to play dominoes. No, 
Say Ons, Ons, shut your stupid face and go and get the prop. The prop, this is a prop down there. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to use the mystical board called the Ouija to call that the Ouija. Yes, we're going to use the Ouija. Go and get the Ouija. We're going to use that mystical board. Go and get it. We're going to use the mystical Ouija to contact. The, if you've come up behind me with a squeegee, I shall physically punch you in the face. I totally will. We're going to use the mystical Ouija to go, go and get it. We're going to use the mystical. We're going to use the mystical Ouija to contact. The others are, ha, 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 staying alive, staying alive, ha, 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 ha. I'm staying alive. Is that supposed to be a Bee Gee? Maybe. Get, get rid of the teeth. Listen, pal, there's a bloke down there with teeth on his head. Forget the bloke with the teeth on his head. You don't know how this is done and don't pretend you do. Listen. We were supposed to be contacting the dead. <laughs> Another couple of minutes of this and that would have been us. I... Right, ladies and gentlemen of Martha, there's only one thing for it. If we're going to do magic properly, I need to bring on a very special guest. A special guest? Yes. Yes, up until now, you have been watching the Scottish Falsetto Sock Puppet Theatre and so have I and so see. But now, would you welcome all the way from Las Vegas, Las Vegas, yes, all the way from Las Vegas, our very special guest, the great Sock Dini, the great Sock Dini. But who could this great Sock Dini be, I wonder? And what a long walk it must be from the dressing rooms. I am the great Sock Dini. Well, you get more of a response in Las Vegas, I must say. Um, I am the great Sock Dini, master of the mystic arts. He's a master with the mystic arts. Me Men envy me. He's got a big wand. Whoop. Women fall at my feet. He trips women up. I, I am a conjurer, a conjurer, a hypnotist, a hypnotist, a master prestidigitator. Don't do that. There's people watching. Look away, children. No. Now, with the help of my glamorous assistant, I shall glamorous assistant. That's you. I shall. I don't think I can do glamorous assistant. Could you channel Debbie McGee, given the opportunity? Do that. We shall now, we shall now perform the most death-defying trick known to magic. Sawing a lady in half. Who, who's the lady? You are shitting me. I shit you not. Go and get the prop. Oh, my God. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, using the most expensive prop in our entire set. Everyone's a critic. Shut your face. Uh, keep it propped up. It, it, it doesn't stay up without my help. Okay, get in the box. Get what? I don't want to get in the box. Get in the box. Oh, my God. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Move out a little bit more to the centre if you could. There we go. Now get up into get get up into the box. There, there you go. Uh, open your mouth. Look a bit gormless. Now, so that wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Uh, you will notice there is nothing up my sleeve. As I did, you expect to laugh for that? Not tonight. No. And don't open and close your mouth. Oh no, it makes the blood spurt. I'm out of here. No, come back up. Come back up. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Do it. Oh, I must admit, without audience reaction, this is going to be rather difficult for you to give us a drum roll. But uh, let's just, for once, uh, use the YouTube. Use your actual YouTube skills. Use your YouTube skills and uh, give us a drum roll. Somebody type a drum roll into the bottom of the screen. Type a drum roll into the comments. Now, there we go. And let's get you back up into the box. Get you up there now. Let's get you up into the box. There we go. He's in the box now. And now. Using my invisible saw, 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 invisible saw, abracadabra, alakazam, sawing a sock in half. How's about that then, ladies and gentlemen? How's about that? A sock, sewn to fucking give that. A sock, ladies and gentlemen, a sock, sewn to. A sock, sock, look at that. It's totally sawn in half. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have you done it? Yes. I've, I've, that didn't work, did it? It didn't work. The prop is entirely fallen back there. Look. It was really hilarious. It was a hilarious ending to the routine. Yeah, it was, it, it was going to be a hilarious ending because I would be standing up here talking and, and, and I would also be at the top of the box. It was, it was uh, I'm really glad that nobody's actually watching this. I get rid of that prop down there. You're turning this. You're turning this into some sort of a comedy show. To be fair, 
No, to be, you've, lo you've knocked over the watch. We don't know how much time we've got. To, to be fair, not much of a comedy show. That that is true. That is true. Yeah, right, we've we've got one minute left. Do you know a nice song to finish this to finish us off? I I do. I'll go get my guitar. So a nice song, ladies and gentlemen, just to take us out of this section of hideous embarrassment. And <laughs> you're going to play that guitar without a hand. My hand has got stuck behind the guitar. Okay, uh, what's this song? It's a song by Lou Reed. Anybody out there like Lou Reed? Oh, well, probably three people like Lou Reed. Everybody else probably thinks that's what you wipe your ass with on a chemical toilet. So it goes like this. A doop, dee doop, dee doop, doop, dee doop, doop, dee doop, dee doop, doop, dee doop. And she never lost her head. Even when she was giving head, she said, you can walk with the rest of it. It's a for me. You can walk. What are you doing? I'm loving cinema. Talk properly. I was adding cinematic verisimilitude. We didn't need cinematic verisimilitude at that particular moment. What we needed was a nice song all the way through. I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. You're fired. Sorry. Tomorrow night, I'm doing the show without you. How, how far from you do you think I can travel? I, sorry. Tomorrow night, I'm advertising for an amputee. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got a great headline act. It's been an honor to be invited here to perform for you for the Martha Comedy Festival. We we'll hope to see you in person soon. We have been the Scottish Falsetto Sock, Puppet Theatre, and so have I, and so has he. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. The Scottish Falsetto Sock, Puppet Theatre. As I said in, during the show, if you want to get involved and say, tell us what you think of our acts, please do. Uh, Karen Fonseca Socks, you are brilliant. Karen, you've been a lovely audience member this evening. If this was a live show, I'd enjoy talking to you when I was on stage comparing in between the acts. First time seeing the Socks, a great tights 10. Oh, very good, yes, very good. Some of the audience members bringing their own jokes as well. It's a free show, you don't have to bring your own jokes. Uh, Andrew Crow, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, there hasn't been any comments for me this evening, and I haven't asked for any comments, which is fine. It's not a problem, but I'll just keep showing myself. Oh, oh, oh Peter, thank you very much. You were great. Thank you, Peter. That's very kind. Yeah, it's very kind. Um, Oh, stop it, Peter. You've been too kind now. That's lovely. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, always the best thing when someone doesn't put somebody's name on a comment, I can just use it for myself. Well, you've seen uh, people's houseboats. You've seen people's Giacomo pillows this evening. You've had a good insight into com comic comedians' lives and just how glamorous our lives offstage are. Are you pleased to know our headline this evening has been knitting in the green room? I've been watching her in the green room knitting something. I'm sure she'll tell you what it is if you want to know what it is. So it's really showbiz. A show this evening and an insight into our comedians' lives. But our headline at the scene in this show has flown by. I can't believe I'm bringing her on already, but she's a fantastic act. I love gigging with her. If I ever get a chance, she's been on Live with Apollo and different panel shows, Roast Battle, Hypothetical, all over your television screens, doing big things, on to even bigger things soon, I'm sure. So our headline act, please welcome to your screens a fantastic and wonderful Laura Lex. Ah, thank you so much. Thanks, Drew. You have been great. And yes, I have been knitting, making a scarf just in time for the weather to turn a bit nicer. I learned to knit in January and um, it, it turns out I have an obsessive personality because now all I do is knit and make dinosaurs and stuff. But um, what else are you supposed to do? It's bloody lockdown, isn't it? I mean, I don't know how you guys are coping with it. I sort of... I've hit the wall a little bit with it because I started out in the first one thinking, well, this is all right. It's not that difficult, is it? Locked down with my husband. I like my husband. We have a very strong marriage. No problem. And then I got about two months into the first lockdown and I realised that it's not that I had a really great marriage. It's just that I've married another comedian and we used to spend nine months of the year apart. <laughs> and it turns out it's really easy to be married to somebody when you're just in separate hotel rooms texting each other. I would argue that is the way to do marriage. But then suddenly we were just the two of us in the house all the time. And it's it's not that I don't still love him. It's just that I think it's not until you've done a lockdown with someone that you realise all the little things about them that really drive you nuts, you know, is the little things like his face. So that's kind of where we are. We were doing all right. To be fair to us, we were doing all right until... Do you remember that week when we all cut each other's hair? Yeah, that was the week that just broke us. I don't know what we were thinking as a nation. Everybody on this island turned to the person next to them and went, Will you cut my hair, please? Like there should have been therapists up and down the country taking out radio adverts going, Do not, for the love of God, turn to the person you love most in the world and hand them some scissors and all of your self-esteem. It's a terrible idea. And we fell for it. My husband did my hair and he did quite a good job of it. I mean, obviously, it's slightly wonky, but I don't mind it. 
Um, I will clear up the hair because there'll be a few of you wondering. The hair is on purpose and it's because I live in Brighton, but the suburbs. So it's a kind of Brighton in the street, PTA in the bed. That's the kind of vibe I'm going for with the hair. Like, I'm on the neighbourhood watch, but only because I want to sleep with your dad. That kind of vibe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Your dad's hot, though, to be fair. Um, so my husband did my hair, and he did quite a good job of it. And I sort of thought, like, oh, all right. So then I said to him, well, can I do your hair now, please? And he said, no, you've got none of the skills required to be a hairdresser. To which I quite reasonably said back, why don't you love me? This is everything that's wrong with our marriage. You never believe in me. Why do you hate me? You know, like reasonable sort of night before period kind of behavior. The, the kind of, I'm not, you're not proud of it, but you know when you didn't care? Like I've never wanted to be a hairdresser in my life. Didn't care about it at all. Until the second he said he didn't think I'd be capable of doing it. And then I was like... It's my life's ambition to be a barber. I want nothing else on this planet other than to cut hair. So eventually he relented, I think, to, uh, you know, stop me making noise. And I started shaving his head and he was absolutely right. I had none of the skills required to be cutting a person's hair. I started shaving the bottom and it came up way too short. And I thought, well, I can't do the whole head this length because I've got to fuck him. You know, pandemic, isn't it? All the usual places are shut. So I sort of thought, well, you've got to blend it, haven't you? You know, it starts really short at the bottom and then what you have to do is blend it so it goes a bit longer at the top. But as he'd quite reasonably pointed out, I had none of the skills required to be a hairdresser. So I don't know how to do that. So I, wa I did Google what does men's hair look like just to remind myself of the shape of a man that didn't look like an increasingly lost shepherd. But nothing was coming up. So I thought, well, I'll just take it slowly and then I can't go that wrong, can I? Because you can't stick hair back on. Tried it. But you you can take it off slowly. So I was shaving away, shaving away, and it was taking forever. And we got to about 20 minutes in, and he said, are you nearly done yet? Which I thought was unfair, because I'm never allowed to ask that when he's having a go on me. But we got to about 20 minutes in, and he said, are you nearly done yet? You know when you answer a question, but you have not fully thought through the ramifications of your answer until it's too late. It's out there in the wild, and you can't get it back in. He said, are you nearly done yet? And I said, nearly I've just got to finish the corners. And then there was just this silence while I think we were both sitting there thinking, well, why the bloody hell does your head have corners? Because <laughs> a head's not meant to have corners, is it? A head is meant to be quite a sort of spherical outfit, but not his. Squovial was his head. But for me, it was sort of like a bit of a revelation, really, because, quick backstory on my life, I've never been able to have children, right? We tried for a baby for three years, and I just never conceived, and I never really got to the bottom of what the problem was. I had some theories. My main theory was size difference, because my husband is quite a big unit he's sort of six foot three and built like a brick shit house you know but like not toned do you know what I mean like more like a bread shit house just a bit squashy around the edges but that's my taste in men I'm not trying to body shame I like a good danger of death if he rolls over in the night you know I want to run into him and he just absorbs the impact sort of hummus with a spoon that's the kind of bloke I'm looking for and and, and I'm not very big I'm five foot and sort of quite a petite frame really and so I wondered if maybe I'm just too small to carry his baby like I'd get to nine months pregnant and the kid would just unzip my skin and climb out like thanks mom that was excellent see you later or my other theory was you know the bit at the beginning of a whole pregnancy thing when the egg's there and then the sperm come in like doo -doo 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 -doo, and they burrow in don't they <laughs> Or they, they, well, they do on the film Look Who's Talking, which is what I'm basing this whole thing on. Anyway, the sperm, do, 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 do. If there's a size difference, is it possible for the sperm to sort of do, 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 and just eat the egg? Like, is that a thing? That can I, it's just I've seen my husband stood at a fridge eating leftover chicken and feels like exactly the sort of thing that his DNA would do. Like, maybe we've got loads of kids, but they're all in a sort of Jonah and the Whale situation. Anyway, so those were my best theories on why we couldn't have children until there, in the middle of lockdown, shaving his head, I realise what the problem is. The reason we can't have kids is that my vagina knew about the corners. She took one look at his square head and just went, babe, I love you, but I'm not 3D printing one of those. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, no, I've, see I've seen one born every minute. I know the damage that a round one can do. I'm not printing one with angles. 
So, in many ways, you know, lockdown's taught me that, at least. I don't know. I just, I think you've just got to get through it any way you can. I'm a bit sick of people policing how we survive a pandemic, you know? Like, we don't know what we're doing, leave us alone. Like, I'm tired of people being snooty about it, you know? Like, oh, everybody's making banana bread and trying to make sourdough and getting a dog. And I just think, yeah, I've done all three of those things and it was fucking great. Not going to apologise. Oh, well, I hope your dog's at least a rescue dog. No, she isn't. I bought her with money like a pervert. I went to a lady's house. She had a dog. I had cash. I've got a dog now. Hey, best day of my life. Not sorry in the slightest. The happiest I've ever been. Taking her back soon. Only got her for Christmas. Don't care. Um, That is a joke, by the way, before you all start commenting. Oh, she's a terrible woman. I would never give up my dog. I love my dog so, 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 so much. I love her. I adore her. She's the best thing. I've wanted a dog for ages, you see, because I suffer from anxiety, which I don't know if you can tell that from the desperation in my eyes. And the fact that I'm even doing this at five past ten on a Saturday night, just talking to my webcam in the faint hope that somebody loves me on a YouTube site that I'm not on. Um... I have anxiety, yes? Right. And, uh, like, I like stand-up, but really, this is a bit... Like, if I could do this my way, I'd just come round to your houses individually and sit on your lap and go, you do love me, don't you? (laughs) That's what I really want is your affection. And I thought a dog would give this to me. And I said this years ago to my husband. I said, can we get a dog, please? They're really good for people with anxiety. And my husband said, no, it's not fair to put that much pressure on a dog's shoulders. Which is cruel, I know, but fair. Uh, His exact words were, if the NHS can't fix you, you can't expect it from a cockapoo. Um, But then we moved house in lockdown last year and uh, and so we got a little Jack Russell called Sertraline who I just, I love her. She's she's the best. And she's actually helped me. Um, Karen was talking earlier about the corona curves. I've, I've piled it on. Oh my God. Who could have foreseen that being stationary for a year and only having access to supermarkets would do this to our bodies? You know how you can count the age of a tree by counting the rings? You can count how many lockdowns I've been in by counting my chins. Like, oh God, it's great. Him. But but getting the dog has helped me shed a few pounds because I've been walking her. But then I started feeling guilty because I was like, oh, well, I could have been doing these walks before I had the dog, but I wasn't. <laughs> because I think what I've learned about myself is that for me to exercise, I really need the threat of something shitting in my house. I just think that's what motivates me to move. But then I was thinking, maybe this is a good business opportunity, you know? Like, Joe Wicks has made a fortune from being sexy PE dad through all of this. Maybe I could do that, because it turns out you don't need a degree in burpees and nutrition. You just need to look someone in the eye and be like, run 5k or I'm curling one out in your dining room. Pick your knees up, I've had nuts. Come on, off you go. (laughs) So I think maybe she could be my business opportunity because I do want to lose some of the weight. And I got into trouble for admitting that the other day. I was on a like a girly Zoom night um, and I said to one of my friends, I said, oh, I, I want to lose a bit of weight. Uh, I said, I don't like my thighs. And my friend said, that's the patriarchy that is. And I thought, well, I don't think it is. I think it's cellulite. And she said, no, it's the patriarchy is why you don't like the way you look. And I, why you don't like being overweight, like, you know, it, it, it's the patriarchy. And I sort of thought, like, I don't know, like, I'm pretty ready to blame everything on men if I can, especially if I get to choose which men get the blame for what. Oh, I will dish it out. Take the blame. You're earning more than me. You can take the blame more than me. Like, I'm so ready for it. But just in the case of what I look like, I don't remember a load of blokes coming round and forcing me to eat biscuits. Like, I think I did this to myself. But she said that it wasn't... No, she said I was being dumb. And I was like, yeah, fair enough. She said the patriarchy gives you unrealistic body standards. And I sort of thought, well... (laughs) I'm sure that does happen to some people, but it's just in my case. It's not that I'm not sad because I want to be a supermodel. I'm sad because every time I walk to the shop in a dress in weather over 22 degrees, my thighs bleed. Like, that's why I want to lose weight. I don't want to be a size zero. I just want for all my clothes to be sitting down clothes. 
You know, I'm tired of having a pile of trousers that I can wear, but only if I'm stood up all day. And even then, when I take them off, every single seam in the jeans is imprinted into the flesh on my legs. Like, I can take off an outfit and look like a tailor's training dummy. And I'm not a tailor's training dummy. I'm an adult human woman. It's just, and, oh, and then she, she sort of said that you shouldn't let clothes dictate the way you feel, which I kind of agree with, you know, like don't be a sucker to other people's expectations. She said, if your clothes aren't comfortable and you're not comfortable in them, just buy bigger clothes. And I was like, cool, great idea. But asking for a friend, how many months in a row are you allowed to do that before you're just being wasteful with fabric? Because I'm on my third clothes increase now and there's a couple of clothes a few sizes back that I'd like to wear more than once you know it's just it's exhausting and, and it's a pandemic I can't go out and buy clothes you have to buy them online and that means like buying five things four of which won't fit for varying reasons so it's not even like you can be like I was too small I was too big you're like oh one leg was too long for those but my waist was too small for those and then that made me allergic to that and it's all got to go back and and I don't even know what to do once the pandemic's lifted because it turns out none of you lot were putting even nearly the same amount of effort into keeping Debenhams alive as I was. You guys weren't even trying, it turns out. For the amount of money I was spending in Debenhams, you guys must have been spending minus money. Like, I now think every time I stepped inside of Debenhams, it was just me and a load of shoplifters. Because I spent a lot, and you guys did not. And my plan post-lockdown was just cover myself in PVA glue and roll through a Debenhams, collecting everything I needed that I haven't been able to get through the lockdown. But now it's gone. It's gone, and it's your fault. And my friend suggested... She said, well, don't worry that Debenhams is gone. You can just shop at M&S. And I was like, you're insane. I can't buy jeans from somewhere that also sells crisps because by the time I've got the crisps home, the jeans don't fit me anymore. So thank you for letting me get all of that off my chest. This is quite nice, isn't it? It's like doing a little video diary late at night. Like, are you stressed? Here you go. Yell everything you think into a webcam. Um, You've been so lovely, I, I assume. I mean, you might have been, you might have all gone. Don't know. I will imagine you're all really rolling on the floor laughing. Um, And I will hand you back to the wonderful Drew. Thank you very much for supporting the Martha Comedy Festival. I've been Laura Lex. Good night. Thank you very much, Laura Lex. And just to let you know, no people haven't been going. You've been watching the show the whole time. Well, we've come to the end of the show. We've got just enough time for a few more comments before we finish. Laura's amazing. Absolutely brilliant show. Thank you for making us laugh. Well, thank you, Carl. As I said, you've been a superb guest this evening, an audience member. Uh, Matt Reese, great show. Well done, everyone. Thank you, Matt. And uh, probably my favourite comment of the evening, uh, watching from Scotland. What a random great YouTube recommendation. Well, when the festival comes back to life in real time next year with people really in the flesh, maybe take a trip down to Merthyr and take in the Comedy Festival in 2022. You're pleased to know we've got a lovely travel lodge, so that will take care of all your accommodation needs. Big thank you to all our acts this evening. You have seen the fantastic John Pearson, the wonderful Sally Ann Haywood. You've seen Karen Bailey. You've seen Andrew White. You've seen the inimitable Scottish falsetto sock puppet theatre. And, of course, our headline act, the fantastic Laura Lex. I've been your host, Drew Taylor. Hopefully we'll get to see you next year in the flesh at Merthyr Comedy Festival 2022. Please look out for information on that in the coming weeks and months and ticket links will be following that shortly. Of course, huge thank you to We Love Mirtha and the Big Heart Mirtha Tidville for making all of this possible and our friends at Choke Pit who always support us for all your comedy ticketing needs. Uh, thank you very much most of all to our wonderful audience members. Uh, Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Danny Danny French. Uh, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Bev. Well, there we go. Thank you, Adele. Thank you very much. Well, I've been Drew Taylor. It's time for me to go now. And uh, we'll all see you next year in the flesh at some real live comedy shows. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs>